Welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. NVIDIA CPUs, Intel Battlemage GPUs, and RTX 5090 and 5080. When are we going to get all this cool tech? What kind of performance can we expect from it? And how much is it going to cost you? We'll answer all those questions and more in this Q&A part two in August 2024. Remember, if you get value out of this video, please give it a like as it really helps out the channel. And of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. With that, Let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows licenses and that terrible activate Windows watermark. Right now, use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD Key and get a Windows 10 or 11 OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 25% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code and boom, Windows is fully licensed for a crazy low price. And Windows 10 can be upgraded for free to Windows 11. And they have Microsoft Office licenses too. Use the links in the video description. Anton asks, why doesn't Nvidia make desktop CPUs? Wouldn't it be a good thing for the market with more competition? Possibly capitalize on Intel's mistakes. And I would probably add to that, maybe Ryzen 9000 mistake too. Mistaken air quotes. Again, maybe they'll fix that, maybe they won't. But let's talk about Nvidia CPUs because I feel like this is one of the stories that actually has flown under the radar because we are actually expecting Nvidia CPUs to launch in 2025. That's right, 2025. Where does that information come from? None other than the CEO of Dell who did a joint interview with NVIDIA CEO Jensen Wang. And as he's sitting there, he's clearly trying to go Jensen into saying something about NVIDIA CPUs. Finally, uh, Michael Dell, who's the, again, CEO of Dell, basically said, hey, come back next year. Now we know that NVIDIA already makes CPUs. Uh, for instance, the Switch, the Nintendo Switch has an NVIDIA CPU in it. NVIDIA also makes professional ones for server and kind of AI applications, factory applications in their Grace Hopper architecture. And these are all ARM based. These are not x86 architecture based like our typical uh, desktop PCs that we have now. NVIDIA uses ARM based CPUs similar to Apple and similar to the Qualcomm Snapdragon X that just came out this year. The challenge with those CPUs has been that Windows has not done a very good job of natively supporting them. Now Qualcomm did a bunch of work with Microsoft leading up to the launch of their laptops earlier this year. You can say, hey, maybe it went well, maybe it didn't go well. I think it was actually very good for a first generation product. A first generation product, people always wanna beat up the first generation products when they come out of the gate. Listen, I know that Qualcomm is gonna come back with a smoking entry when they come out with the next series of those CPUs. They're gonna learn a lot of hard lessons in their first generation, but that's typically what the way these things work. Does that mean consumers should buy it? Not necessarily, although I think it's great for productivity and professional applications, just hasn't been any good for gaming. That's NVIDIA's challenge right now. A couple of years ago, they did actually try and buy ARM, the company that owns the rights and all the technology patents to the ARM-based CPUs. It's much more similar to what you have in like a phone basically than an x86 CPU. That being said, they're super power efficient. Look at the uh, Apple MacBook M3. They're very powerful and very power efficient in very specific types of workloads. Obviously not gaming, because nobody's really doing a lot of heavy gaming on the on the Apple MacBook, right? Most games are compiled for x86 architecture, and any of the games that you do play uh, using an ARM-based CPU, generally it has to go through some kind of emulator. So basically it takes in that x86 code and it really quickly tries to process that and spit out something that the ARM-based CPUs can use. And you know, listen, that compiling process adds a lot of latency to it, adds a lot of basically extra processing power that's required. So the performance has never been as good. That being said, I think that Windows now, especially with what the work that Qualcomm's already done, and if Nvidia wades into the space, they're the most valuable publicly traded company now in the world, in the world, right? I think Microsoft would make additional improvements and Microsoft is working on additional improvements for those ARM-based CPUs. So it could be super exciting in terms of the, their next generation CPUs. We have heard that these are gonna be through leakers basically on, uh, it's gonna be some kind of combination of processes of TSMC probably making like the Blackwell cores, the GPU cores, integrated GPU cores for them. And then Intel's, three process. And I don't want to do a deep dive into Intel's various different manufacturing processes, but it would be on an Intel process. Now that could all change. Of course, it could always change. It could always change, but we are expecting those CPUs next year. Now these are likely going to be laptop, laptop 
handheld mobile CPUs, these are more than likely not going to be desktop CPUs. It would require a whole architecture, like you'd have to have motherboards for them, you'd have to have RAM that you can plug in. These CPUs are more than likely gonna wanna use uh, LPDDR6, right now low, low power DDR6 out there, which has pretty good performance, but not necessarily DDR5 that we have now on desktop. Obviously not DDR4, that's an older technology. So it, it remains to be seen, but I think it is something to be super excited about for 2025. Of course, we're also expecting new GPUs in the fall, in the fall, and Archangel asks, do you think we're gonna get some Battlemage GPUs that are on par with the mid slash budget range currently on the market, like the 7600 XT and the 4060? In fact, I think they're gonna be quite a bit better than that. Feel like the 250 to $350 area, really lacking in value. And what about the drivers? Okay, so here's here's the deal with the Intel stuff. First of all, there is some new information. I'll get to that in a second. But in case you're not familiar with what Battlemage is, it's basically Intel's next generation of GPU architecture. Their current generation is called Alchemist, but they are called XE in terms of the overall architecture. And the next generation is called XE2. And if you looked at what they put out around Computex just about a month or so ago, you'll notice that they didn't mention the name Battle Mage anywhere. That's because all these companies are essentially trying to distance themselves from gaming as much as possible because they all want to look super serious in front of these big financial institutions that are looking to make huge investments, pump up the stock prices of these companies, basically, that are getting into AI. So that's what that's all about. That's why Jensen barely mentioned uh, gaming GPUs at his Computex thing. It is like two hour long, boring as heck Computex talk where the only announcement was, oh yeah, but this is a gaming GPU. Oh yeah, you gamers, right? But what we did learn at Computex is that Intel's made some massive improvements in their GPU architecture for XC2 Battle Mage, including things like how they basically process and render the frames, uh, how the memory calls work, like literally everything. They have redesigned the architecture from the ground up, including that the driver issues that their current generation GPUs have, although I will say Tim at Hardware Unboxed did through his entire Steam li library, like 260 plus games at the Arc thing, and he found that 93%, I believe, worked just fine with it. And a couple more percent, you could, you could uh, basically have some fixes and have them work fine, and only a handful of games, basically, did essentially not work at all. So Intel is basically claiming up to 50%, 50% better graphics performance, and that's on the integrated XE2 cores that are going to their Lunar Lake graphics. Now there's all kinds of questions, of course, are they gonna be able to scale that with more power? That's a big question out there. But the new information that we've gotten in terms of Intel Battle Mage is that the press has reportedly seen some shipping manifests for Battle Mage GPUs out there, which means they're at least going to the next stage validation and they're getting ready. They're getting ready for a launch out there. When would that launch come? Well, basically all the rumors point to before Black Friday of this year. But there are some other rumors out there saying that could slip into 2025. I, I feel like all these launches are slipping into 2025 and I really don't understand why. Hopefully Intel's GPU architecture is not one of them because yes, the, it, the GPU space definitely needs more competition. Now I am concerned about the Intel GPU division and I've been concerned about it because Intel's a company's not doing well and they have to be losing money on their dedicated uh, GPUs, like for, for PCs, basically desktop PCs, because they are selling them at a significant discount over what that silicon must have cost them to produce. If you look at the die size on like the an ARC A770 or A750, significantly larger than their competitors, you know, the RTX 4060 or 7600, or even the older architecture 3060 and RX 6600. So hopefully Intel can find a way to at least break even on these and keep floating them as they continue to claw up. In terms of overall performance to the top end, I've seen rumors up to 40, 80 levels of performance, which would be phenomenal. If you think about it right now, what's the top end A770 really get? If you just ignore the VRAM for a second, really it gets you the same performance as a 6600 XT or 6650 XT, RTX 3060 kind of levels of GPU performance. Not super fast, not super fast. We're very budget category, even in their top end SKU. It would be awesome to see them do 4080 current generation because I think for the next generation that will put them solidly in the mid range. And if they can actually come out first before everybody else, it'll give them a lot of ramp, right? How long are you gonna have to wait for a, an RTX 5060 or 5070, since we're not gonna get the 5090, which we're gonna talk about in just a second, 
probably until 2025. That's where kind of things are with Battle Mage. And my fingers are crossed. I'm I'm super hopeful that we can see a third player finally emerge in the GPU space. All right, Dustin asks one more. AIBs like Gigabyte and MSI support production of upcoming ARC GPUs. And will they have a 4K capable gaming GPU? In terms of the 4K, I know I just said that they're gonna perform like a 4080. But the question is, how are they gonna scale on resolution? And every generation is a little different. Like for instance, AMD versus Nvidia. Last generation, the 6000 series for AMD versus the 3000 series for Nvidia, as you went up in resolution at similar performance levels, the AMD cards were very good at 1080p, then they lost a little bit, or I should say Nvidia probably scaled a little bit better at 1440p and scaled a little bit better again at 4K. And then this generation, the 7000 cards for AMD versus the 4000, flip that on its head. So now AMD is the one that scales better with their current generation architecture than the 4000 series. And the best example of that is look at the 7900 XT versus the 4070 Ti Super or 4070 Ti. And you can see that basically where they're tied to 1080p, but at 1440p, this uh, the XT pulls ahead and a 4K pulls further ahead. So it, it just depends on the generation and how they scale. Arc has scaled very, very well in this generation as you go up in resolution, particularly 1440p. No one really tests 4K on those cards. They're just not powerful enough. So it's it's entirely possible. Then again, they are completely redesigning, redesigning the architecture, but could be for the better. So we'll have to wait and see. Will the AIBs, other AIBs jump on the bandwagon for Intel? I was shocked when they were able to get Acer in the game. That was great. Obviously they got ASRock, but ASRock is not one of the AIBs that makes cards for both AMD and for NVIDIA. There's only, what, three of those, right? It's MSI, ASUS, and Gigabyte. And MSI has recently kind of distanced himself from AMD GPUs. I really think they're trying to fill that hole or maybe they've been tapped by NVIDIA to fill the hole left by EVGA. Rip EVGA, man, we really lost a pinnacle company when they decided to kind of pack up shop and go home. But Intel has been able to get uh, you know, ASRock in, they were able to get an AIB that I'd never heard of called Sparkle in, and they pulled Acer in. So yeah, I think it possibly maybe a, like a gigabyte or somebody starts making cards for them as well. But I think the better the architecture does, the more competitive Intel can be, then yeah, AIBs are gonna get interested. Of course, we're also expecting the RTX 5090 and 5080 in what, just about four and a half months from now? Four and a half months. And there's crazy leaks out there in terms of what the performance is. People are wondering, should they just be holding off and waiting for the RTX 5000 series or should they be buying something now? Carlo asks, how much faster is the 5090 gonna be over the 4090? And yes, there are crazy leaks. We are in the silly season right now for leaks around these GPUs. You're gonna see performance claims probably up to three or four times as fast in rasterization. And I'm just gonna tell you, probably, Total nonsense, total nonsense, right? But I will say Nvidia gets into this too. If you looked at the performance claims for the for the 4090 when it launched, Nvidia said it's gonna be up to two times as fast in rasterization and up to four times as fast in terms of ray tracing than the 3090 Ti. Now, where do those claims come from? What does that mean up to? That just basically means rather than taking an average of uplift across all games, which is kind of how we typically judge it, not kind of, it's exactly how we judge GPUs, they basically look for a couple of statistical outliers and they pull those statistical outliers in and say, Ooh, look, it's up to this, even though the rest of it might be down here. So don't fall for any of that marketing nonsense. In fact, I went back uh, just a second ago and I did look at the 4090 versus the 3090 Ti from last generation, because those are the claims that NVIDIA made about the 4090. So where did it actually come out? Well, I look at tech spots, day one review is AKA hardware unboxed. Day one review with the RTX 4090. Now I will say they used the 5800X 3D because at the time it was more or less the fastest gaming CPU on the planet. They found that at 1440p, it was 40% faster than the 3090 Ti. And at 4K, it actually scaled quite a bit better. It was 58% faster. That's a good uplift. That's a good uplift. I, I can't imagine anybody who at the launch of the 4090, including myself, didn't say, wow, that's a fast GPU out there. I'd also looked at some more recent benchmarks using like a 7800X3D. And obviously the problem with the 4090 is it's got so much CPU overhead. It's so CPU bound in a lot of games that at 1440p it went up by like another 10, 12%. And at 4K it went up like 15 or uh, almost 20%, depending on the game you looked at. So with a 7800X 3D, you got a lot more out of it. That's why those of you out there who are thinking about buying a 5090, I would say wait for the 9800X 3D because that is likely gonna be at least five or 6% faster than the 7800X 3D, which will matter with a GPU like the A5090 out there if you're trying to eke out every frame and just spend all the monies. 
So in terms of the 5090, look, I know that people do like deep dive analysis into the amount of cores that they're speculating it's gonna have and all that. Just looking at the architecture, if it's a successful launch, I think it'll see a similar uplift to the RTX 4090. In a lot of ways, it almost doesn't matter if it's good value. The 4090 is not good value if you look at price to performance, but it's the fastest GPU you can get. That's why people buy it. It's buy, People buy it because it's the fastest. And we all know that NVIDIA, if they get beat on the chart, which they're not going to this generation because AMD doesn't have any high-end stuff, they would just juice it up with like a 5090 Ti, basically. I would expect that kind of uplift, you know, like 40% 1440p, 58% 4K would be phenomenal with the current generation of CPUs that we have. And then more than likely, as CPUs get faster, uh, we'll find that there's actually more headroom in there that we couldn't get to with the, even the 7800X 3D right now. In terms of when are we gonna get the RTX 5090 and 5080, listen, all the rumors still point to a CES 2025 launch that's in January. Of course, for the RTX 5080, it looks like it won't perform any better than the RTX 4090 Dragon Edition that can be shipped into China under the current US AI export bans to China that the US government has in place. And that's a political limitation. That's not a technology limitation or anything else. If you're hoping for a huge uplift down the stack other than the 5090, I don't know, it's it's really tough to say. And I think that those, that kind of that limitation out there, the AI band limitation, is actually gonna impact GPU performance for the next generation, at least on the NVIDIA side. And we got about Nick Flix, I hope I'm saying that right. Is the 5090 going to outperform the Ryzen 4070? <laughs> ah, oh my goodness. If you're not familiar with what the heck the Ryzen 4070 is, watch our uh, Q&A video from last week. I'll link it down in the video description. It's a huge meme, basically. It's a huge meme that's taken everything over. Check that out in our video from last week because I did a deep dive because I was confused as to what the heck that thing was. Of course, the perennial question is, should you buy now or should you wait? Not just for new technology, but what about upcoming sales? That's what that guy in purple is asking. What kind of discounts do I think we'll see for Black Friday? Of course, we just had Amazon Prime Day in July. And if you didn't watch our GPU market update video, we actually went through what were the best GPU discounts offered around Amazon Prime Day versus the price now and the price just before Amazon Prime Day as well. What kind of GPU discounts can we typically expect? On GPUs, what we found, the discount is anywhere between five and 10% max, max. Um, there is always outliers out there. For instance, the 6750 XT got like a, I think it was a, a almost a 20% discount because those had been selling for quite a bit more than the 6700 XT. It's like 6% performance difference, but they came down from like $329 all the way down to $269 during Amazon Prime Day, which was a huge discount. But other than outliers like that on specific cards that they're clearly just trying to liquidate the rest of the 6000 series at this point, they just want to get rid of those things. You know, you typically don't see any more than a five to 10% discount. And I will say mostly on the AMD side, Nvidia is super stingy and the big discounts are always gonna come from either AMD or Nvidia because they have the biggest margins in there. And so what they'll do is they'll offer through the retail channels, they'll offer basically discounts to retailers. Now that kind of did blow up in AMD's face recently. Remember that big uh, report saying, oh, AMD's not selling any GPUs. Well, it had to do with losses in their GPU division but not because they weren't selling GPUs, but because they basically had this big debt bubble that they had built up over time, offering those kinds of discounts through the retail channel. And as long as GPU sales continue to increase, that debt bubble kind of kept getting pushed into the future until GPU sales kind of tanked, and not just for them, for NVIDIA too, they all slowed down. And all of a sudden uh, the bill came due and they had to take a huge write down on their uh, quarterly earnings report. And yet all these people out there, oh, AMD should stop making GPUs. They're not selling any GPUs. That's clearly not the case. That's clearly not the case. That being said, is that gonna temper AMD in the future from offering similar kind of uh, buyback programs through the retail channel? that's gonna allow retailers to lower the price that much. It is a good question in terms of what kind of discounts we're gonna see on GPU specifically around Black Friday. I'd expect that 10% though. And then CPUs typically much bigger. Motherboards usually have much bigger discounts. All those other components typically get a much bigger discount around Black Friday. Remember, if you got value out of this video, give it a like, this makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. Speaking of cool PC content, did you check out our recent GPU market update? GPU prices suck. We go through how bad they suck, when we think they're gonna improve, and what kind of discounts you could expect in the future on Black Friday and Amazon Prime Day in October. Check it out, and we'll catch you on the next one.